so today we're going to carry on with the build of the uh, new Traxxas X Max, the Hulk Max. First thing I just want to go through is the motor, because I haven't had the, uh, the motor up until now. So I just want to show you guys um, the motor that's going to be going in this. So it's running a Max 5 ESC, and it's going to have this Leopard 5698, and that's a 910 KB motor. Now I'm going to do a little bit of experiment before um, I decide on a final uh, gear ratio for this because I haven't run one of these motors before. But it's a four pole motor, um, so it's you know it's got plenty of torque and should hopefully draw fairly low uh, current, especially through a Max Five. It was originally going to have a TP motor, but um, changed with this. They're almost identical. Um, Motors, this is very slightly uh, bigger. The main difference is the, the KV and the way that they're wound. So um, this is a what's called a delta wound motor, whereas the TP custom wound that was going to go in uh, is a star wound or a Y uh, wound motor. Okay, let's put that to one side. Right, so this is where we're up to. Uh, obviously, I went through you guys how um, I assembled these uh, rear arms. Now I've uh, subsequently assembled uh, the front arms. Um, I didn't bother filming it because you know it's pretty uh, it's pretty basic. Um, so far I'm extremely pleased with these uh, integer parts or integi parts. So we're going to be putting them on today. And the other thing we're going to be doing is hopefully installing the shocks. So uh, some nice Mad Max shocks, wrap the reservoirs in uh, green carbon vinyl and we've got some full force racing uh, shock covers which are extremely nice. Now I'm in the UK, these are very very hard to get hold of in the UK, the shipping costs basically double what the actual shock covers cost. So we've got them. Now the other thing when you're installing uh, these rear A arms is you install your CVDs at the same time. So I've had a lot of questions on these, my um, CVD boots. So I'll go through how to install them as well, uh, which is a fairly simple process. I've got three here that I've already done, as you can see. So we shall, um, we shall go through that when we get to uh, that stage. Right, okay, that's the... Um, TPO bumper just removed there, just to make it a bit easier to get these pins in. This isn't normally at all the way that I would, the order that I would chuck in, but I say it's just, I've been waiting so long for parts to get released in customs that I wanted to start with the parts that I already had here, just to make some progress. Okay, so I'm just very gently tapping that pin. Tapping that pin into place. There we go. So that's the lower one. Now at this stage, I always put in the CBD and knuckle. So I'll just bring you in a little bit closer here. So you can see. Okay, so before installing this top arm, you need to install your CBD drive, which is straightforward. However, because we're putting on these boots, then uh, I'll show you what you need to do to install them. So with your CBD in hand, we push out this pin. You can see that there poking out. So I pull that out, put that to one side. Now this allows these two parts to come apart and we can put this um, stub axle to one side. Now in the end of here, there's a little metal, uh, you see that? Little metal retainer for the pin. So that allows um, the CVD to pivot in this direction. So we'll remove that. Again, keep all these parts safe to one side. Now, this top part, although the CVD is going on, the um, boot, sorry, is going on this end, we need to add a little bit of oil on the top I'll get that to focus on the top of here. Just a tiny little bit of machine oil. Then we get our boot. And we pull that down. 
And it's what that oil does, is it just allows this rubber boot to slip over there nice and easily. And then that comes down, and that will get be what goes on our drive cup in here. So if I just do a quick loose fit, so CBD in, and then the boot goes over like so. Maybe you can zoom that in a bit. See, and then that'll stop all the dirt and rubbish getting inside. Okay, right, now we need to uh, reassemble. Now, top tip here is to use white lithium grease inside the stub axle. So give that a quick spray. Now, so what this does is it dries fairly dry, uh, so you don't get as much grit and stuff sticking um, inside your stub axle and drive cups, inside all the moving unions, which is uh, obviously quite bad. Okay, so then we're going to get that pin back in. This is probably the most uh, fiddly part. So you can see you've got the hole through there. That needs to go in and line up with the holes in the stub axle. Like so. Now what keeps that pin in is you've got two bearings. You've got one bearing that sits here in the hub and the other bearing sits here, your big bearing. Okay, so that stops that pin from coming out. So now what I can do is insert that through the hub and then onto my drive cup in there. Now that drive cup in there also wants spraying with white lithium grease and then we can slide the CBD boot in and we can bring the top Up like so. We can put a pin in. And you'll note at the minute I haven't actually put any screws in. That's not um, that's not an issue at this stage. You can loose because these integer uh, parts have got nylon bushings in them, you can actually loose fit all these parts. Okay, okay so that is now that one complete. I'll uh, give you a closer look. Okay, so you can see the drive cut, you can see the white lithium grease and then that comes up on there and all I do is I put a cable tie around here and here and sometimes I add a little drop of um, soup glue just to keep that in. So I need to put the screws in here and here. Now you can either use screws with washers or you can add washers. Not so much a problem with these um, integi parts. Right, put you back on here now. So what I'll go ahead and do is um, We'll get the shock installed on this side, and then that's this side effectively uh, finished. Okay, so the easiest way I find is go into the bottom first, and the bottom just takes it's the smallest pin that you get in the set. Again, just push that into place there. These have got two different positions. I find the outer position better. It gives a slightly better CG on the uh, chassis. And then the top pin, slightly longer, going through the plastic here, and they're in. And again, screw retains top and bottom. I'll um, 
go through them a bit closer in a minute. And now we've got one sprung iron. I'm going to go ahead now. I'll install all the other three and then I'll come back and I'll go through exactly what we're going to do screw wise for the others. Okay. Okay, so that's now all four A arms, knuckles, and everything installed. If you can see. Now I'm just going to run through a couple of things to um, help you guys out when you're doing this. So when you get to this stage and you put your stub axles in, it's important to put your hexes on and then you've got your little retaining clip as well. And by doing this, that'll just help hold the uh, stub axle in place and that'll stop it sliding in and out. Now as well, if you're, um, you know, you've got your bits and bobs for your truck lying about, you can also now put uh, your wheel nuts on. Just so it's one less bit that you've got sitting in a toolbox that can get lost or go missing. So these particular ones are the Mad Max wheel adapters because we're using green Mad Max wheels on this uh, green themed X Max. Okay. So whenever I'm building, I look to just try and get bits out of the way. So again, you know, that's just a way of getting four more bits out of the way. Okay, so one other thing that I want to run through with you guys that um, I've had a few messages about and I've seen people make mistakes on. The rear hubs, you've got these two uh, threaded lugs here. There's a lot of dispute as to what these are about. I can in fact say that these are actually designed to be wheel scrapers. So a piece of plastic comes off there and it goes onto the inside of the rim and scrapes any mud and crap off as you're going around so your wheels don't become unbalanced. Now it's very, very important that when you fit your hubs that these are facing rearward. Um, so these are at the back of the vehicle. Uh, they can easily, you could get these the wrong way around and put them on the front. Now uh, they are labelled up on the stock ones left and right but on the upgraded ones most of them aren't. So it's important. Um, if you have these the wrong way, it puts out the geometry for this top arm and you can just about fit it in place the wrong way, but you will be forcing it and causing binding um, throughout your A-arms, which you don't want because, as you can see now, you've got a nice bit of movement with no, um, no binding whatsoever. Okay, um, so at this stage as well, uh, one thing I will just quickly um, share with you, I've had a few questions over XMAX stands. Now, I'm in the UK, so to buy an Intergy XMAX stand is beyond expensive. It's um, about 10% the cost of an XMAX. So I use these. Cheap keyboard stands. Alright, as you can see, pretty basic. This is my most basic one, to be honest. This was about £12. Um, so that's about $16, $17. Uh, I've got a slightly better one that I paid £15 for. You can get these off eBay very easily. They're adjustable and they hold the truck very, very nicely, as you can see. It sits on there. Now, the only thing that I do um, have to do that I find is I cut these down slightly just to fit the inner part of the wheel on. If I now go ahead and loose fit a wheel for you, you can see just how nicely it holds them. Okay. Shall I get too carried away? You can see now and that wheel isn't quite fully in place, but once it is, that pretty much takes up that gap, and it's the same both sides. Right, I hope that's been helpful for you guys. The next stage is I'll probably start looking at getting the uh, steering assembly and things like that in. Okay, um, if you haven't done so already, please subscribe. Check out my previous videos for hints and tips, tutorials, as well as uh, running videos. Uh, if you hit the notification button, you'll get notifications on all the notifications that are coming up. 
um, about this vehicle and everything else that I've got going on at the minute as well. Thank you very much.